Hi everyone, uh, I'm Mike, and uh, today I wanted to speak with you about Velociraptor. I wanted to go through a few examples of how we can use Velociraptor in a, in a real DFIR case. You must have heard of Velociraptor. Um, Velociraptor is a unique DFIR tool uh, that gives you, the user, the power uh, to be very flexible about the way that we collect uh, artifacts or information from endpoints. And the thing that makes it really cool is that it has this very powerful Velociraptor query language. And I'm going to show you today how we can use that to do some advanced hunting. So it's a very short talk, so we're going to go and skip a lot of the information, but there's going to be some references at the end so you can have a look at some more information about this. Um, so let's just take a quick look at the overview. What does Velociraptor look like? So it's an agent-based system where we have an agent running on different assets. And we have the Velociraptor server, usually it's deployed in the cloud, and the um, admin UI, which is what we're going to be using today, uh, we can use that to, um, to task and control the, the server. Um, the nice thing about it is it has persistent communication to the, to the endpoint, so we don't really have to poll or anything, we can just go ahead and, and query the endpoints uh, interactively in seconds. So I'm just going to go through a quick tour of the, the, um, the Velociraptor UI, because I'm not going to show you guys how to install it because we have a lot of references about installing it uh, already. Um, but the, I just wanted to just point out that it's a very fast, very efficient, scalable system. And typically, uh, we're looking at about 10,000 endpoints uh, on one server. So it is actually pretty efficient. We can do some very, very fast hunting with that. So let me just show you a quick Velociraptor GUI tour. Um, let me switch to the UI. So this is the Velociraptor UI once you have it installed. Um, and the first thing that you can do is you can search for different machines. Uh, let me just show you the sidebar here. Uh, the home page is the dashboard. We'll just have a look at the dashboard here. Um, and you can see that I have this server running for a, a while. Um, and it has, this is the memory usage of the server, just a bit of monitoring. And this server has about 2000 clients connected to it. We're gonna do some hunting uh, in, in just a minute. Uh, what I will do is first I'll show all the, all the machines. There's a whole bunch of them and it just goes on for ages. Uh, but we can actually search for specific machines by label. So we can label a machine. Uh, and we just, we just kind of highlight it here and add a label. Uh, and that allows us to kind of group machines into, uh, into groups so we can hunt, hunt uh, in a more targeted way. I have a machine here, which is my machine here, which I've labeled uh, as uh, Mike, uh, the label's Mike. So uh, let me just um, find it. Let's label it, label Mike. <laughs> um, I'll just hunt. I'll just uh, show you on another machine. Let me just quickly have a look here at the dashboard. We've seen that. Yeah, and we can investigate individual clients uh, interactively. So let's just pick a client. Uh, and so this is just some information about this client. Uh, if we have a look at the VFS, we can actually go and interact with files on the machine. So we can, you know, go through and. At the moment, uh, this is just showing us what information the server has on this on this machine. So we can just uh, uh, refresh that uh, by clicking that. That just syncs that directory listing, so we can see what's what's on there. Uh, we can also do a recursive directory listing and you know see a whole bunch of files uh, and on that machine. And um, yeah, we can we can go in and you know download individual files or whatever right from, from that machine. So when we look at a file, let's say uh, end user that, this one, uh, we can simply click collect from client and then it just collects that, that file from the, from the machine. And then, uh, and then we can you know, look at it. Uh, let me just stop that. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through that part very quickly because I wanted to show you guys uh, a, 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 a example of what we actually use uh, oh, I just wanted to show you quickly the uh, uh, interactive shell feature that we can actually go through and we can get a shell on that machine at any time. So for instance, in this case, if I wanted to know what, uh, what are the local uh, users on that machine, you know, I have a little PowerShell uh, 
little PowerShell snippet here, I can simply paste that here and and collect that. And that, that just basically runs the PowerShell on the machine and we get back the responses. So, you know, in this case, this particular PowerShell just tells us what the local admin users are. So, so we've got this, um, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so let me um, go through. And so we've seen how we can fetch files and interact with the machine. But what's really cool about Velociraptor is because we have that query language, that we can use to uh, to really customize the way that we are actually interacting with the machine and, and querying things. I just wanted to show you an example of uh, what we call a forensic artifact or a Velociraptor artifact. Uh, and we, we use that term a lot, and you'll see that a lot in the documentation of uh, the artifact, the term artifact. So when you look here in the UI, we have our artifact viewer. And you can just click on any of these artifacts randomly. You'll see that uh, these artifacts are essentially just queries that are packaged up inside a YAML file. I'm not going to go really into details about the query language itself in this talk, but you just need to know that these artifacts are just queries that are named, so they have a name. And so we can actually just uh, use those queries and just uh, ask the uh, endpoint about them uh, at any time. So just to give you an example of how useful it is, having these uh, artifacts in YAML uh, form allows us to inter interchange them uh, and share them with the community. So I'm just going to go through an example, a really quick one. And this is just something that I just put together in the last few days because it's actually like the current zero day, you know, that at the time of recording at least. Um, it is the serious Sam or Hive Nightmare example. So let me just go through that. Uh, and you can see that the, there is a, a uh, CVE for it, and there's an advisory ad, and you know we can have a, a look at you know the different um, resources. There are many resources that explain this vulnerability, but essentially, what this vulnerability is, if you read the details, is that there is just a weak permission on the SAM file. So if you look at it, the built-in users uh, group has read permission on the SAM on the directory where the SAM is contained. And that allows you to allows low privilege users to just read the SAM, crack the hashes, and escalate to domain admin from there. So it is actually quite a serious vulnerability. Uh, and so you might have you know a whole bunch of machines, and you can say, oh well, how do I how do I fix that? Well, you can see the the advisories, and Microsoft has released an advisory about it, uh, and we need to check the ACLs. But how do I do that to two thousand machines? Uh, how do I check that you know two thousand machines are patched or whatever? So this is where a query language really shines, right? I can, the idea is that I could write a query uh, right now and run it on all my 2000 machines uh, and then see the results uh, in seconds, right? So, um, so let's, let's have a look at, some, uh, at our uh, public artifact reference, which is a public place where we can share these kind of uh, artifacts, these queries. So we, this is our website, our, our documentation website, and we have a thing called the artifact exchange. The artifact exchange is a place where we can change uh, information about current threads uh, and uh, people can write different queries, different artifacts that we can share with the community. So you, most of the time, you don't really need to be able to write your own VQL. You can just uh, have a look at the artifact exchange to see whether there's something similar. I mean, you see, we've already got something here, but the one that I just wanted to show you today was this uh, access control list uh artifact which is uh allow which basically passes uh, uses uh powershell to get the access to the acls of the um of of the sam uh um this the sam files right so uh, i'm not going to go again into too much details here but all you have to do is really just uh, find the artifact that you're interested in and then you just copy it from here and then we're just going to go back to our server into the uh, artifact viewer. And we're just going to paste that artifact into our server, right? So this is very simple. We just click the plus uh, button here, highlight, delete, you know, paste. And, and that just pastes the artifact from the artifact exchange. So, so you could just uh, directly use it. I mean, if you, you can uh, pretty much see that that's the first part, that's the PowerShell script, a very small PowerShell uh, thing. And then we wrap it in VQL, and then we do some filtering there with uh, with extra extra processing, right? So it's a pretty straightforward um, approach. But now, when we save it, 
then you will see that uh, it actually, we have a customized artifact. It's part of the UI, part of the Rolls Raptor, and we can just use it in any context that any of the other artifacts can be used in. So uh, let's go back to our, to our machine. Let's see if we can find it again. Yep, so this is my mic label, right? So this is the machine here. And um, now I'm, I'm just gonna look at that one machine here. Um, over here on the top, I've got the name, the host name of the machine, and it says connected. So it's now connected to the machine. So we don't really pull, we are directly connected to it. So when we task it, we can immediately um, immediately uh, get information from it. So I'm just gonna go to the collected artifacts and Velociraptor just deals with artifacts. That's all it knows about. So this is a list of the artifacts that are collected. When, uh, when we first start, we collect this information, general information artifact. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, click this plus button here, and we're gonna collect that new custom artifact that we've created, which is the access control list. So I'm just gonna select that. I can search for it first. Uh, and it again shows me a bit of a description of it, reminds me about it. But you can see that there are a couple of parameters here that I can use to customize this artifact that I've got from the artifact exchange. So I'm just gonna con configure those. And you can see that I can change the globe. So I can you know, check for other files and access controls. In this case, I'm interested in the SAM specifically. So it's, it's gonna be in this directory with an S star. Uh, and this is the ACL filter uh, that I'm specifically looking for. I'm only interested in files that have that uh, that permission, that filter. So, because this is the vulnerable permissions. So once I do that and configure it, um, then I can just launch it and, uh, and off it goes. So this is going to go to the endpoint, to that endpoint and run this PowerShell thing. And, uh, and then it will come back with a result that would just be all of the, um, uh, all, see it's finished and uh, it's uploaded for rows. So just like Velociraptor is a query language, really queries only just return rows. Let me click on the results. And we can see here that uh, it's showing me the SAM. Uh, it, this is the owner administrator, but these are the ACLs on it. And you can see that this is the kind of problematic ACL here. So this machine is vulnerable to this, to this uh, uh, hive nightmare uh, zero day. So, so that's cool. And so I could, I could do that and I could, and I'll show you in a minute how you can do a hunt over thousands of machines and find that out in which ones uh, of your machines are uh, vulnerable in seconds. But uh, now, what am I gonna do about this? I mean, like, okay, so I know this machine is actually, so this is just a big of a recap to show you just the general structure of this uh, VQL query and how we adjusted the pr uh, parameters and we could see the, uh, the vulnerable thing. So how do we, what are we gonna do about this? This machine is now vulnerable. So we actually really need to remediate it. Now, I mean, of course we can always log into that machine and and use our remediation steps. And in fact, if we look at our references, there are some remediation guides. And particularly, we need to run this command here. Um, but this command, uh, so you know, we can do that to one or two machines, but we want to really be able to do it to many machines. And this is where Velociraptor can really help us because we can just change this VQL to add that extra command here, that extra remediation step, and then, and then we can use that to uh, remediate that machine. So let's, let's uh, give that a try. Okay, so we, this is the remediation per, uh, step. And what we're gonna do is we're going to go back to our artifact here. And, uh, and instead of, we can now customize that. So the one that we copied from the, uh, from, from the artifact exchange is, is good. It just tells us about it, but we wanna change it. So we're gonna just click the pencil button here to customize. And, uh, and what we're gonna call it is uh, you know, remediate. For example, we change the name, so it's going to be a different artifact, but it's very similar, right? Like essentially the same thing, except we're going to add that, that thing here. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to um, uh, out, let me just check this, uh, this format, what it was supposed to be, out null, okay? So this one basically just runs it without, uh, yeah, without any output, because we don't want to mess up the, um, the JSON that we are, we are extracting, right? So, so we're just gonna, as an extra step, run this extra remediation step, and then we're going to look at the permissions. So hopefully that will show us that the permissions have been fixed after we do this. So we're gonna save this. So now this is the remediation step. And I mean, generally we wanna be very careful when we're doing remediation, because you know, we don't really wanna mess up the, uh, the system, right? Uh, but let's, let's have a look. So 
Uh, so we're going to do a new collection. We're going to collect this new one. This is the remediation one. And we're just going to launch that. So it's, it's doing the same thing, except it's going to do that extra PowerShell snippet to just clean up the machine. And then hopefully, uh, once, we, once we finish, uh, we should see that uh, that users one uh, disappear. So um, that's hopefully it worked. <laughs> uh, let's remediate it. Oops. Oh, sorry. Uh, let's check that again. And uh, hopefully that, that would have worked. So this gives us an idea of how we, uh, oh, it's still there. <laughs> Maybe that remediation is not working too well. Uh, there we go. Should run the remediation step. Maybe it's. Let's see. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Sorry. This remediation is not for PowerShell, so we're just going to do this Windows System Thirty Two config. Yeah. Okay, so let's do the remediation one. We can copy it again and launch it. Run the same thing, but with the modified one. And this time we should expect to see that command worked and yeah, it returns zero rows. So it actually worked correctly uh, and there's no more results. So now if we do that access control this check again, so we just copy that same artifact collected again, second time, uh, and then it should return new zero rows because now we have no uh, vulnerable SAM. The SAM is no longer vulnerable, right? So it doesn't have that ACL on it because we've, we've fixed it, right? So uh, again, we have to use the correct PowerShell version of the of the of the fix. But uh, once we do that, we just edit it to PowerShell, and it just goes off and does it. So we can now do a hunt to uh, to remediate all of these machines. Okay, so that's that was pretty cool. Um, so let's have a look at the second example, and this one is a little bit more involved, and it 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 basically uses a bit of research. So in this sec second example, is about disabling log files. And, uh, uh, and you might not know that you can actually uh, download things in Windows using the Beats Downloader. That's a pretty common, uh, this one's a pretty common uh, persistence that a lot of, a lot of uh, people, people use, right? So uh, attackers use. So here's an example of a command line and it uses something called the Beats service, right? So the Beats service is used to download the Windows updates and various other updates, but essentially, it's like curl, basically. It goes off and downloads stuff from the network. Now, if you have something like an EDR that watches to see, you know, oh, is, is there a PowerShell connecting out to the network? And it could be suspicious. So a lot of attackers use this Bits admin to download their malware because uh, it just Bits admin is part of Windows and it just it's usually whitelisted and signed. And so it goes off and a lot of EDRs just let it go because they don't uh, monitor what exactly it's downloading. So you can actually use it to download anything, including you know, any, any PowerShell or whatever you want as, as a, um, uh, a download cradle. So let me just uh, try to, uh, to do this as an example. So we'll just uh, open up a shell. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to download, uh, let me just put it in mic test. Okay. And if I just run this command, then it's going to go and it's going to create a bits job and goes off and downloads this uh, google.com into uh, C users mic test dot, oops, test dot PS1, right? So that, that is what it went off and downloaded that right now. So this is actually kind of suspicious thing. And a lot of people know about this. So usually you actually can uh, monitor for that using the event viewer. So if you look at the event viewer, uh, then often uh, you will see an event. And the event is in Windows, Bits clients operational, right? So you see the event and this is pretty suspicious. A lot of people have like event forwarding and they forward that to their uh, seam and, you know, and then there's alerts and all this kind of stuff and it escalates, right? Because this is actually pretty suspicious. When you look at, uh, at this event, you can actually see who downloaded it, oops, the username. And you can also see um, in one of the other events where it was downloaded from and who created it. So you can see this is the URL that we downloaded from. This is what they downloaded. 
And that would set off a lot of flags if PowerShell is coming from the internet. So, but th I'm not going to talk to you about this bits thing because it's well known. What I am going to talk to you about today is this very interesting uh, thing that a lot of people don't realize is you could just turn the logs off. So if I right click on this, and if I just disable the log, like so, very easy. And if I just clear this log, I'm going to, I'm going to clear this log and do it again and show you that now, the log is not logging, right? Because the log is disabled. So if I had an event uh, forwarding type seam, then I'm just gonna you know, forward events from this, then I'm just now completely blind. And all it takes is you just right click on this thing and you know, it just disables the log. It's not a big deal, right? And so you know, if an attacker is about to do this, they're just, you know, they can do that, they can disable the log and off we go. So what we would like to know as defenders is like, has anyone, done this has anyone disabled the log what was the baseline what should it be the baseline so first the first step is figuring out you know what is going on when i disable this log and when i disable this log um what happens is that so let's say if i don't know what it is so usually i would just uh run proc mode so i have proc mode over here and i would start it up and uh and then just you know do this disable log business. Maybe I'll just re-enable it again now. Enable. And then I can stop Procmon, stop capturing. And I can add a filter. I've already added a filter here just for this talk. Uh, the filter is looking for an operation, which is a reg set value. So basically, when I change this in UI, something is going to set a value somewhere in the registry. And I don't know exactly where. So I'm just going to see a uh, filter for those. And you can see very quickly that when I turned the, um, the event log on or off, disabled it, then you'll see a particular key uh, somewhere here, uh, which corresponds to that, uh, that setting. Uh, where is it? Here, this one, right? So this event is a Windows current version, WinEVT channels, Microsoft Beats client. So this is a typical example of somehow the attacker is misconfiguring the system and we want to know uh, what's going on, right? So we want to write an artifact here that just detects this across uh, across our system. So let's uh, uh, let's have a look at this example. So this is the example I have here. Um, so we did this. We we looked through. Uh, we checked about the disabling. We did procmon. We checked this uh, value, and in the end, we can write an artifact to check for that key, that re specific registry key. And again. In this talk, we don't have a lot of time to uh, to be able to see um, which uh, uh, to work out how to write this this query. So I'm just going to paste it. So we can actually run this query as it is uh, and create an artifact from it. But let me just show you what that query looks like. We're just going to run the query in the UI. So in the UI, uh, we have a thing called a notebook, which we can create a new notebook, notebook here, test. And in this, in this notebook, we can write any VQL that we want. We can run different VQL. So uh, let me create a new cell, VQL cell, and paste. Again, I'm not going to show you how to actually write this in this talk because it's not enough time, but you can see that here's the registry key that we are looking for. There's a, a globe here, so there's a star. So we're looking at all the events. Uh, all the uh, logs and then looking to see whether they're enabled or not. So we can run this query and what it will do is it will basically show us which query is enabled and which query is disabled, right? So we can actually write this artifact using this query to know which which event log is enabled, which event log is disabled, right? So <clears throat> so let's, let's, uh, let's do that. So we'll write an artifact. So this time we're going to create an artifact out of this query. So just like we did before, but this time we're going to create a new artifact. So we're going to go to the artifact viewing, the artifact viewer, and we're going to add a new artifact. But remember, before we just copied it from the artifact exchange, but now we're just going to write our own artifact. So we just need, need to give it a name. So it's going to be a Windows event log, uh, event log enabled. I don't know. We just give it a name, description, and so forth. Uh, and, but really, the most important thing is to paste our query here. Oops. 
And uh, because this is YAML, we have to kind of like tab it over a bit. And you see, as soon as I do that, the, the syntax highlighting helps me. Here I have the preconditions. So that's telling me that it's only, this artifact is only running on Windows. So I'm just going to delete that. And I don't really want any parameters here. So I'm just going to just do that. So that's, that's my new artifact. I just create that. And there we go. We have a new custom uh, Windows enabled, event log enabled artifact. So now we can simply collect it from our endpoint, right? So we can simply go back to our endpoint, collect that artifact, just as we did before. Remember, there's no parameters this time. So we just hit launch and off it goes. And that's going to tell us basically which, um, which uh, clients are, uh, which logs are enabled or disabled. There we go. So the same thing. So, so we've gone from an observation of uh, something weird's going on. How do we hunt for it? And then we create uh, an artifact for it. So this is the, the standard workflow, workflow in Velociraptor. It's the hunting workflow. So we start off with an idea. We explore the idea in our VQL, in our queries. Once we come up with a query that we like, then we simply convert it to an artifact and then we can go hunting. This is the part I wanted to show you right now is how we can go hunting for this. So what is normal? And if you look at the event log, you'll see that a lot of them are enabled, a lot of them disabled, and you don't know which one's supposed to be enabled that's not enabled, which one's supposed to be disabled that's not enabled, disabled, right? So you, you don't, you, what you want to know is whether one of them has been changed, but you don't know what's normal. So if you don't know what's normal, that's called baseline, where we need to guess, get a baseline of what's going on. And in order to do that, what we want to do is we want to collect this information of all the logs that are enabled, all the logs that are currently disabled, from all the hosts. So we want to do a hunt. A hunt is basically when we go through and we collect that same artifact, this one, across the entire network uh, at once. So at the moment, we've just collected it from this one machine here, the mic machine, but we want to do it across the entire network. Um, so let's, uh, just for the sake of our argument, let's have a look at this log. So this log here is enabled, right? So that's enabled. Let me uh, just quickly check my other machine here. And this is my other machine. This is the Mike's machine. And I'm going to disable the log just on the one machine. So I'm going to see like, this is going to be the one that stands out, right? And let's go and do a hunt and see which one is disabled. A lot of machines are enabled. This, it, this log is enabled by default, but we're just going to disable it. So we're going to go to the hunt manager. This is the hunt manager. And we're just going to create a new hunt. So we're going to add another artifact, we can give it a description. So, you know, events logs, select the artifact that we want to collect. So it's just this one, whether it's enabled or disabled and literally just launch it in this case, because there's no parameters, it just goes ahead. When we create the hunt, it's paused. So we're just going to launch, start it, run it. And you'll see that as soon as that happens, the uh, endpoints are starting to get scheduled and they're starting to, that number will increase as they're getting scheduled. And each one is going to go off and check its event logs and send back the results. And then, and then it will be finished, right? So it's going to be scheduled and then finished. And, uh, and that goes off. And this is basically how we go off and hunt through all our, our machines, right? So whilst this is happening, this, you know, we don't really even need to wait for it. It's going to be, uh, we have like 2000 machines on this, on this uh, system. So it's going to take a couple of minutes, but we can immediately start uh, and analyze the results. So this is the pro processing step in the notebook. And the notebook is where we can write different VQL and we can analyze the results. So you see, for example, this is the results that came back from this machine, 87. And, you know, it has some zeros and ones, but we don't really know which one is, um, which one is valid or not. So we want to basically just do a, a group by, we want to do a stacking. We want to stack all of our results and then see which ones are different. So, um, so what we really want to do is we want to do a group by, uh, and then we want to, we want to count, right? Count as count. Uh, and then we have the log, all the different log and the value, right? Um, and the host name, uh, that's the host name here. Uh, and then what we want to do is we want to group by the combination of log and value, right? So uh, group by basically counts together all the unique ones of the same value uh, combination. So if, for example, this bit client operational is one on one machine, and then it's zero on another machine, that's a different group. 
So we want to do, do that, right? So, um, so then when we do that, so uh, it's going to go off and, and essentially just count them. And this way, we will be able to see which ones are common and which ones are not, uh, not common because they'll sort of stand out. This is a, a pretty classic hunting technique called, you know, stacking where we can just count, just counting different things. And we can see that some machines are a bit different to uh, other machines. It's going to take a couple of uh, seconds while it's doing that. Let me just jump onto the presentation to just see what uh, we're doing here. So again, what we've done is we've, we've done a stacking exercise across all the groups and we counted all of them. Oh, we should have also ordered by a little bit, but uh, maybe we'll find when we order by, we can see the count, uh, you know, in order. So we can see the ones that are a bit different. Um, so that's going to take a couple of seconds while it's collecting the data from the endpoints. Uh, but typically this is what you see. You'll see that that one machine that has it disabled. So the value is zero it stands out right and then the other ones are all the same so that's more or less the baseline and then that one is uh the one that stands out all right um <clears throat> so uh we only have a couple of extra seconds so i'm not going to show you how to do this but i'm just going to tell you uh how we can turn that artifact into a detection rule and uh this is a little bit uh of, uh, of a more advanced use case i would say uh, and in VQL, you can actually create event queries. So you can actually write monitoring rules that use the query to detect when something happens in the future. Uh, and this is kind of what it looks like in, on the endpoint. We have the query running and it basically ends up sending partial results as, as, uh, as, as it happens. I'm just gonna skip to the architecture. So we can see that event queries are running on the, on the client and then they're getting buffered and they're sent off to the server when the when the client is back online. So we can write a query that simply uh, you know detects whenever this log file is changing. Uh, and this is an example uh, of this is an advance over the typical you know OODA loop. In in a normal uh, EDR type scene system, you you have basically a whole bunch of events that are going into the scene, and then we have escalation, and then it goes back through and, and then the user an operator actually goes back to collect extra information but we can actually do that on the on the endpoint by simply adding a query uh an event query that runs through it so to give you an example in this case uh we have i'm just going to skip through because we are out of time we can add this particular event uh artifact to 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 velociraptor that will simply check uh whether the event logs are enabled or disabled periodically and when they become disabled, uh, then there'll be a difference uh, and, the, and the event will, and the query will basically report a row that will be different. So an event log has been disabled. Um, <clears throat> so I, I think we're out of time to actually demonstrate that particular um, uh, one. So we're just going to uh, just show you a screenshot when, when that happens. Um, basically, once we install that artifact here, uh, then we will see whenever someone added or removed a, uh, a, an entry from the, the event logs uh, from, from the, the registry key. So whenever the registry key changes, we will see on the server an event raised. And so that's how we can turn VQL into a monitoring type system. So we didn't cover a lot of stuff. It was really quick, uh, a really quick talk. So I do encourage you to go and have a look at all the resources that Velociraptor has. So there's many, many things that we didn't cover. Um, and you know, we only just introduced it. So hopefully this will give you a bit of a taste to see how you can scale up BFIR and be able to, uh, to uh, collect information from thousands of machines in seconds. Uh, and then in the last slide here, I have uh, a whole bunch of references here, but really docs.velociraptor.app is our website. It's, uh, if you go there, you know, there's lots of resources here. We've got training packages, announcement uh, documentation, and the artifact exchange you could use that to um, submit to it and so on it's an open source project uh, found on github you can visit us on github file issues and also uh, we are uh, always on discord so you know help help out any questions uh, or anything like that so uh, thanks for thanks for your time um, and, uh, and and have a good conference thank you <laughs>